using technologies to dissect the genetic landscape of humans. So the project called the Cancer Genome Atlas Project, which is uh, a large project funded by the National Cancer Institute, looks at uh, 20 tumors. Some of them are common, some of them are not so common. Um, the question really is, what are the genes that are altered in, in these tumors? So what we do is we take the tumor DNA, we take the normal DNA from the germline, uh, for the germline DNA we take the normal, normal tissues like uh, adjacent lung tissue or the blood tissue and we, we do the sequencing of both normal DNA from the uh, lung or the uh, blood tissue, the tumor DNA and we ask the question what are the things that are altered in the tumor? So we do the exome sequencing which looks at all the 20,000 genes. Uh, all along the length of the genome. And, and we also do in some patients a whole genome, such as exons, and exons as well as introns. We also do RNA sequencing. We look at the methylation patterns that can silence the important genes. Our plan in lung cancer uh, is to complete about 1,000 tumor analysis through the Cancer Genome Assets Project. We've already done uh, and reported the results of 178 patients with tumors for lung cancer where we did this exome sequencing and all of them, we did RNA sequencing, we also did whole genome sequencing and so on. So the key points that are emerging are the following. Number one, these genomes are complex. These cells have been exposed to years of tobacco smoking and they've accumulated a lot of mutations. Many of them probably don't play a role in their pathogenesis of cancer. So not surprisingly, we find about 200 to 250 mutations per tumor in these things. Not all of them, as I said, or pathogenic, only some of them are important. We find that um, two key pathways are altered. The pathways that are involved in famous cell differentiation and the pathways that are involved in oxidative stress response are altered in these tumors, famous cell response, small cell response. In terms of therapy, which is what uh, practicing physicians would uh, focus on, is how often we find the target as alterations. We do find some targetable alteration in nearly 70% of the tumor specimens we look at. And these involve the TA3 kinase pathway, these involve the TFR uh, amplification, they involve the smattering of targeting and a number of genes. And also we find that CDK and TA is altered in a number of these specimens. So today we could launch clinical trials using some of this, some of this information particularly focusing on FGFR, PA3 kinase pathway, and we need to do more work to figure out how to go after some of these uh, lesions that we think are targeted uh, eminently. And in, in the future, I really think we are going to look at squamous cell lung cancer as a disease that's eminently targetable, and we'll be using a number of target therapies. And I'm hoping that by the end of next year, we will have completed the analysis of all 1,000 patients uh, using comprehensive uh, exome uh, and, uh, sequencing and we will be able to figure out what key alterations are present, what's driving these tumors. And this field is, as, as, is just getting started. And in the next four or five years, we're going to have lots of different um, uh, pathways and genes that will be identified for this project.